All right, I've cleared out my board, and we've got the area moment of inertia written there, and we know why. Last thing we have to do is find the moment. Now, this is a simple enough problem. You may be able to just sort of eyeball the moment. You may be able to just do this in your head. I strongly discourage this. You need to uh, learn the process for finding out uh, mo bending moments and shear in the beam, even when it's simple. In fact, you should uh, go through the process when it is simple so you know whether you've got the right answer or not. If you don't, if you only learn how to do this in your head, when you get a problem that's too hard to do in your head, you won't be able to do it. That's bad. So let's go ahead and draw the load shear moment diagram for this. Okay. Now we don't know what F is. It's a number. We don't know what the number is. doesn't matter. We'll just leave it as F. It'll be fine. All right, so here's the beginnings of my load shear moment diagram. There's this load F in the middle. I guess I'll make those shorter, make at least partially to scale here. There's F over 2 and F over 2. Now, this problem is symmetric side to side. The load is exactly in the center, and the beam is the same side to side. It's a length of 6 feet or 72 inches. So, because it's symmetric, it's easy to see that this is um, F over 2 on both sides. Now, if you don't want to take my word for it, if you want to do the equilibrium analysis, absolutely go ahead and do that. This is one of those times. This is so simple, I omitted the equilibrium analysis. But if you want to uh, learn the process and use the process every time, that's just fine. Okay, so here's the load. All right, I'm going to do exactly uh, what the process says. I should start over here, apply that load, and work from left to right. So I go up, F over 2, go over until I see another load. There's the another, the another load. Go down F and over here. So this is F over 2 right there. And this is minus F over 2. I'm going to cross hatch this just to make it a little easier to see. Okay, last thing is the moment. As I move from here to here, um, really what I'm doing is integrating. If I can find the area here, I will know the height there. Conversely, if I know the height there, I know the slope there. If you prefer to think in terms of areas and slopes rather than integrals and derivatives, that's just fine. They work exactly the same way. So whatever method works for you is fine. Okay, so here's what we've got. Since the slope the height there is constant, the slope there is constant, it's a positive number. The height there is a negative number, it is constant, so there's a negative constant slope. This area and this area are exactly the same, so this is going to be absolutely symmetric. The only thing I need to know now is what's that height right there? That's my maximum moment. In fact, I guess I could cross-hatch that to make it easier to see. There. It's even symmetric. How's that? Okay, the area here is the height times the base. Well, I know the base is 3 feet. So I'll go ahead and just uh, put this in those terms. So that height, or that uh, height right there, is 3F over 2. Now, let's talk about units for a second. This is in feet. We don't know what the units of F are. Well, we do. We know it's supposed to be pounds. But Let's pretend we don't. Let's let the units flow through the problem naturally and make sure that the units that come out of the end really are pounds. Okay, so right now, all we know about that is there's uh, that number there is, has the units of feet. F has the units of something. It better come out pounds at the end. Okay, so my max moment is 3F over 2, and all I've got so far is feet. That's going to be pounds eventually or at least it had better be. So there's that. I'm going to erase that. We're going to plug back into that equation, and then we'll be done. Now, a minute ago, uh, in the previous uh, portion of this clip, I told you about positive and negative moments, and positive and negative curvature. This is positive curvature. This is negative curvature. Well. 
I always needed a, a, a way to remember this. So here's something that might help. I'm going to warn you right now, this is going to be the stupidest thing you're ever going to see, but trust me, it works. Okay. There you go. Positive curvature, negative curvature. That's positive, it's happy. That's negative curvature, it's sad. So there you go. Stupid, yes. But you'll remember it now. So anyway, let's go back to, to our uh, uh, governing equation here. My over I equals 3F over 2. Now I've got feet. Pounds are still sort of buried in that variable because the variable can have units as well as val uh, uh, a value, a numerical value. Now, I don't want feet. I want inches. Okay. The expression inside the parentheses there equals 1. 12 inches equals 1 foot, so those are the same thing. That equals 1. I can multiply anything I want by 1 without changing it, so that's what I'm doing here. Actually, I'm all that. Um, and the area moment of inertia is 7.3365 inches to the fourth. Okay, that cancels out, that cancels out. We need Y here as well. There. Okay, so right now I have inches times inches over inches to the fourth. So the units right there are, so far, are 1 over inches squared. Now that better be uh, pounds in there, not F, but that'll drop out here in a second. If we work this all out, I'm going to check my notes here, we get 4.907. squared. Okay. Again, the pounds are missing, but the pounds are buried inside that F. So all we've got to do now is set that equal to our known value of stress, and we're in business. So 10,000 pounds per inch squared equals 4.0, sorry, 4.907 squared. Right. You can see where we're headed here. That and that cancel out. So F is going to wind up in pounds. And if we do this, carry out the calculation, there you have it. F equals 2037.9 pounds. Now, I've done everything to five significant figures, which is what I usually ask my students to do. It seems to be a, a pretty good compromise. It's enough significant figures that round off errors in the problem, but not so many that we have a, it becomes cumbersome pushing the numbers around.